Hey guys, welcome to a special episode of the Rolling Thunder Show. Today we have Casey Lee from the Super Fight just last weekend. Yeah, okay. with the four uh, four strike prize challenge. Yeah. How are you doing, Casey? Good. I'm really good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to you guys. Um, again, JK, thank you for giving me the opportunity to fight in that uh, match on Sunday. Feels like ages ago, actually, but it was only a couple of days ago. Yeah, it was only uh, a couple of days ago. Actually, a lot of people have been talking about it, right? It was very, it was a very exciting event. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed in myself. Uh, it didn't last as long as I had, had, had anticipated. Just talking again, just before the podcast started, uh, underestimating Fabio's leg lock game. Um, but he, he, I mean, he was super, super good, super technical. Um, yeah. And uh, as we were saying just before, I think if we were ha- had the opportunity to do a rematch, I'd definitely approach it a bit differently with more of a leg lock game in mind. Um, it's, it's my issue is I usually feed the leg to then give yeah. myself the opportunity to find a counter or find an opening, yeah. but he was super tight and it was very difficult for me to find any entry yeah. before he was already there. Um, but it's, it's my fault. I think I, went, I didn't prepare myself. I didn't prepare for his kind of technical leg lock situation. Yeah. In my opinion, like I was said before the podcast, I just think... Uh, um, he approached the game like really aggressive in the mm-hmm. beginning. He was getting into all the positions. Yeah, I think uh, you, you were just kind of getting slowly getting into it, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. it ended up playing catch up. Yeah, as yeah. I've seen the most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Most of the ten minute fights that I've had, uh, fortunately enough, I, I had one back in uh, Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. We did a, yeah. uh, again a black belt super fight. Ten minutes again. The pace was a lot slower. You know, yeah. you kind of gradually build up to it. Yeah, I think. Uh, I was unexpected. It was unexpected. And I think next time, knowing a bit more, kind of like how Fabio plays, definitely yeah. push forward a bit more aggressively. I would say, yeah. and assert myself a lot more. Um, but again, he he was super technical, super good guy. Uh, Both of you are very technical. I mean, uh, it was. I, I was commentating, and then I have to, you know, I have to keep talking the whole time. Mm. Different positions, you know. JK was telling me. Uh, our last event, he's yeah. like, you got to explain a little more. So I'm like, hey, that's 50-50. You know, they have to put the legs through. And yeah. then there's the, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, no, it was super, I mean, very enjoyable. Um, it also allowed me to kind of practice my defense a bit more. Yeah. Um, there's not many people that I have the opportunity to roll with at such a high level. Yeah. Um, so it, it was a good experience for me. Um, yeah. I know he competes a lot more and it's kind of, this is, his uh, uh, career, I would, I yeah. guess. Uh, so for me, as like the hobbyist, I, yeah. it's nice for me to kind of see the level that I need to reach, yeah. or the uh, kind of the standard that I need to achieve to kind of make myself a bit more um, challenging for other people. Um, and it's nice that we, me and Fabio kept in touch, and then we're going to kind of arrange a bit of a sparring session just to yeah, maybe yeah, trade yeah. some ideas. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's not, it's not, you don't get the opportunity to to roll with as many high level guys. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think the white blue belt is a lot of guys you can spar with. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then as you get to purple, yeah. brown, black, yeah. there's less and less, right? Yeah, exactly. And to find somebody, oh, 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 I don't know how old you are, if you, you don't mind me uh, asking. Uh, I, uh, 34. 34, I okay. I think I'm 34. As, <laughs> okay. So I think Fab was a little bit younger. Yeah, uh, I, actually, I'm, I'm not sure on his yeah. age. but uh, I think... I think I've, I'm saying he's in mid twenties, late twenties, I think. Potentially, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so it's almost, you know, close, getting yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, a lot of times when you get to brown belt or black mm. belt, you have guys that have been there for a long time. Yeah. So they're much older. Uh-huh, so uh-huh. especially in Asia, yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. tough to find someone your black belt, Correct. the same size and age. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, he he. I think so, one of our the guys from our gym they saw his posts, looking yeah. for a kind of a challenge. Yeah. Um, and like you said, there's not many other kind of black belts, yeah. uh, kind of that similar cat, that similar kind of weight, that yeah. similar sort of age who, who are around. So I was, it, the opportunity for me to have a go was there. So I thought I might as well jump at it and see, yeah. see, see where I'm at. It's also a good indicator to see kind of my level, my standard, yeah. uh, what I need to work on. Um, especially with the whole leg lock game being something new to the scene, yeah. I guess with the, taking over for me i don't think it's new i just think it just kind of it's like a trend mm-hmm. I, I think mm-hmm. jiu-jitsu has different trends for sure for sure for sure <clears throat> and uh you know before it was like baron bolo yeah 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 and yeah. stuff and now it's the leg log yeah yeah and i don't know what is next what do you think is next uh no idea um well like you said uh you start off with the baron bolo and then you had like the keen corner and the lapel game and yeah. now you we're moving and transitioning to the yeah. to the leg log game um 
I, I guess maybe, I don't know, I just saw recently there's that whole top pin mount yeah. attack. So that could be a new, a new yeah. thing. Uh, At one time, I thought the Nicholas Miragali, you know, his game, everybody's going back to yeah, the yeah, lasso. Lasso, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it could be that. I mean, I think that's, uh, my gi game is very different to my, my yeah. no gi game, actually. Um, it's transitioned a lot from kind of, my gi game used to be a lot of um, spider guard, okay. uh, lapel. And I still do do elements of that, but now mm. I'm trying to focus more on the kind of the top pressure game, the kind of Carlson okay. Gracie smash. Yeah. So how long have you been doing jujitsu? Actually. So, uh, oh gosh, we're what 2021. So 13, 13 years. I started in 2008. Okay. Uh, my second year of university, um, and I only began because my brother-in-law invited. When we went back for for Christmas, my brother-in-law challenged. I think it was Christmas or summer holidays. My brother-in-law had mentioned that he started this new martial arts and we come from, well, we used to do a lot of martial arts growing up. So I did like karate, uh, a bit of judo, uh, but never really stuck, really, never really stuck with yeah. me. Um, so then he, he invited me, um, my brother-in-law was saying, oh, I started this new martial arts. I want to see if you can kind of yeah. tackle me, uh, trying to reverse me. And I remember he mounted me within, because I'm bigger than him, I mounted yeah. him within he mounted me, sorry, within maybe a couple of seconds and I just couldn't do anything. Oh. Um, it, it kind of opened my mind like, oh gosh, if there ever was a situation where I was in this position, yeah. I'd be in trouble. Um, and him and I, we're, we're quite competitive, but in a friendly nature, whether it's food or kind of spicy food or kind of any sort of sport <laughs> challenges. So then I started, uh, I started to, uh, 2008, my second year of university. Um, and I had the opportunity to go to Roger Gracie's Okay. in Labrick Grove yeah. in London. Um, and I didn't really know much about jiu-jitsu. He had mentioned Roger Gracie. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, oh, he's world champion. I was like, oh, okay, he's here in London. I might as well go and train with him. Um, but it used to take me two hours to get there yeah. and then two hours to get back because I didn't have my car and I was taking yeah. public transport and I was going from the south of London to kind of yeah. um, mid-west of uh, London. So it used to take a long time. Train there for maybe six probably less than that maybe a few months three months yeah. um and i was just like this this especially when i was studying as well yeah. to be a teacher i was the commute is killing me yeah um and uh i had the opportunity to actually sit down with him uh, okay. i said oh can i speak to roger can i discuss with him my jujitsu yeah. and uh he he was one of the first people kind of to open my eyes to kind of like um how uh, inclusive jujitsu is and he was like look I said to him, uh, it's taking me two hours to come here. I mean, I love training with you. I love the environment, yeah. but it's just too much for me. It's, I'm losing four hours of my day yeah. when I could be studying. And I said, there's a, there's a Carlson Gracie jiu-jitsu, which is only 40 minutes away. Yeah. Um, and little, di little did I know there was like that whole uh, Carlson Gracie, Gracie Baja, Roger Gracie yeah. divide. Not really divide, more of a kind of competitiveness. Yeah. Um, and he was very, he completely ignored that. He was like, look, as long as you're doing jujitsu, you can train wherever. I don't, I don't mind. Yeah. And he was super nice about it. And then uh, speaking to other people, they're like, oh, you can't go train other gyms. And well, that's, it's a rival gym. You can't be doing that. But he was the one that was saying, look, just go and train yeah. jujitsu. So for, for our viewers, I actually, uh, I never properly met Casey. I think this is actually first time. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 uh, so yeah, this is the first time I've actually had sat down and have a conversation with you, which is nice. Yeah. Um, very impressed with your commentary, by the way, on the, uh, oh, thank the you. Force <laughs> thank you very much. And your enthusiasm. Um, but yeah, so then I, I, I managed to go to Carlson Gracie, um, and that was at Hammersmith. Yeah. Um, it was very kind of, um, I can't remember the name of the road, but with very small gym, very kind of yeah. rough looking. So you had the Roger Gracie, you yeah. could say it's, if you were to compare it to gyms today, it could be like the pure gym. Yeah. And then you go, I uh, went to kind of like Carson Gracie. It was very much like the, the like underground. Garage. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. garage, bunker gym. Everyone's super tough, super sweaty. We used to go super hard. And then yeah. that's when I kind of really enjoyed jujitsu because I yeah. didn't have to worry so much about the journey, the commute, but more yeah. kind of the experience of jujitsu. Yeah. So, uh, and for our viewers, um, if you don't know who Hodger Gracie is, Hodger Gracie is probably a lot, you know, call him the greatest of all time. Mm -mm, for sure. And uh, 10 times world champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ADCC champion. So he probably won it all in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I mean, he he's done he's done everything. I mean, he, even when he did a kind of that return against Bouchesha. Yeah. That was incredible. I love that. That was the whole experience. It was amazing. Um, I actually had the opportunity to be under his mount as well. He used to. <laughs> and I was like, I cannot. This guy is 
just you just couldn't move. His yeah. pressure game, and then he was teaching a lot of the kind of the cross collar chokes. And yes. it was, uh, at that time when I just started, I was like, "This is I can't literally can't do anything." And then you learn more about jujitsu, and you realize Absolutely. how hard it is to stay in that mount position and yes. to get a choke. And I was, it's just incredible actually. The it is the, the kind of the base you have to have to hold that. Um, yeah. And his style is very different to kind of the the Carlson Gracie. Um, style that I kind of started learning. Yeah. It was a lot more smash passing, a lot of more yes. um, pressure, a lot of mm. kind of grit and determination and to push through and have that forward pressure. Yeah. Um, and then thankfully when we, we kind of, the Carlson Gracie kind of name in London started expanding, we, we had new gyms and we had new yeah. instructors and then it gave me the chance to try different kind of uh, avenues within Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. So then I started learning more of the Spider Guard game the close guard game. Um, and we have a really good kind of bunch of instructors yeah. in London. Uh, and it gave me a really good foundation and base. That's good. That, that's how, is that where you're from? Yeah. England? So England, yeah. yeah. Uh, my parents are Malaysian. Okay. Uh, born and raised in the UK, uh, okay. down south. Um, went to London to work yeah. and to study. Um, so managed to stay at Carlson Gracie for, uh, gosh, uh, eight years. Okay. Um, so achieved my brown belt there. Okay. So just before I came to Hong Kong, I was given my brown belt. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. And then nice. I came to Hong Kong. I uh, had been put in touch with Mike Powers. Yeah. Uh, he was at FFG at the time. Yeah. Um, and then um, I also got told about Rodrigo Medeiros uh, being... Caparral or, or Medeiros, sorry. Yeah, Rodrigo Medeiros uh, at Epic. And yeah. I wanted to kind of follow the same Carson Gracie lineage. Yeah. Um, and I knew that he was there. So then I managed to get to train at Epic until... <laughs> It folded. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, I was kind of lingering for a bit, trained here and there, and then okay. they opened uh, Shanghai BJJ, and yeah. we still managed to follow the kind of Carlson Gracie BJJ revolution. Yeah. Um, so that was really good, and I managed to continue that kind of lineage. No, that's awesome. I mean, uh, jiu-jitsu, it is a long journey. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. wherever you go, you try to find places to train. Yeah. Um, when I was traveling, I, I just trained at whichever gym was closed. Yeah. I think, so. yeah, definitely being in Hong Kong, I'm... My miss has been very tolerant. I always need to have at least one or two sessions wherever we go on holiday. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I guess it's a privilege to be able to be a black belt um, because yeah. you're welcomed by a lot of gyms to come and yeah. uh, come and train with them. And in some of the few occasions, I've been able to share some of the techniques yeah. that I do. Um, and, and yeah, I think Asia is, Asia is definitely developing a lot quicker in kind of the jujitsu scene. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we, we used to have a massive team in yeah. london and we used to just we used to take like an art we used to take like an army of of people yeah. down to competitions in the uk and just take that's great yeah um it's it just i mean jiu-jitsu has been great for me it's been it's given me a lot of opportunities it's absolutely me, yeah you're gonna meet a lot of people like different from different walks of life for sure and uh, and for those you know a lot of white belts or blue belts mm. watching i always tell them you know Screw the Baron Bolo. <laughs> Go back to the basic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, uh, Hojer Gracie. Yeah, yeah. Talk about Hojer. Hojer's game is very simple. It's, very it's actually a, all white belt moves. Yeah, if yeah. People call them white belt moves yeah, or yeah. fundamental moves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he makes them work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on world champions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, Junio, the guy yeah. who competed on Sunday. Yeah. So I've been teaching. Well, we've been working together for a few years now. Yeah. And we always worked on his basics, uh, yeah. and <coughs> we kind of we kind of knew from early on that his guard was his best uh, position, yeah. and uh, he showed on Sunday like how how he strong did. the basics can be. Yeah, I mean from pulling guard to then doing a hip pump sweep to mount, yeah, and then allowing him to come back into guard and just do the basic chokes. Super yeah, good. I actually I, I really liked uh, Junior. Yes. Uh, on his game because mm. uh, I mean. Uh, from what I remember, mm. I could be wrong. People are calling me out these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I, I saw him try first to with a hip bump. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I was like, okay. And he tried a telephone arm bar. Mm. I made a joke. Nobody answered the phone. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I heard it. I was there. <laughs> but um, and then and then when he got the sweep, he got he swept him two times. Mm -hmm, he was at two times. Yeah, yeah. And he he was getting the timing. Yeah, so, yeah. So uh, a lot of times, I think for you know beginners yeah, yeah, or yeah. even intermediate guys yeah a lot of times they one move doesn't work they switch and then yeah. they switch and switch yeah you actually lose position that mm -hmm. way and sticking to one move yeah was actually um 
very inspiring. Yeah. Because a lot of times you do two times、mm. and then you're like, okay, screw it. Yeah. Let's yeah, go to yeah, another yeah. move. Yeah. But he kept going and it was very good timing. Yeah. Twice, he, very good timing.、Mm. I think the first two was almost like, um, Because striking art and grappling like us is、yeah. a little bit different.、Mm. You know, striking you try, you know, one two one two doesn't work. You keep、mm. going, you、mm. try again.、Mm. But in grappling, for some odd reason, you know, oh, armbar doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scissor sweep doesn't work. Okay, let's let's go to something else. Yeah.、Right? But I he I was inspired by his move because you yeah. Know, I mean, JK can testify as well. When we've been training together, he、yeah. he he chains them together, and his timing is very good. So the first two were kind of more. The the first attempts I would say was more feeling out the other guy,、yeah. seeing his reaction, because he has a lot of he chains a lot of moves from one to the other. So、yeah. if that hip pump sweep doesn't work,、yeah. he pulls the arm across. He goes and tries and take the back.、Um, so it's just the basics that he's been. He he's very good at.、Um, very good, very good.、Um, and it's it's always nice to see someone that you've been working with for a long time pull off those kind of simple moves. It is. I mean,、uh, one of the guy that you know.、Uh, One of the pros, and he's retired now. Bernardo Faria, he does、yeah. the same move over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And same as Hodger, sometimes he does、mm. the two on one. He just go mm, 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 right through. And I tell a lot of guys too when I'm teaching in Kowloon. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just gotta stick to it and、yeah. just find the timing, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's different theory of training.、Mm. So for mine, my theory is you do the same moves and then you keep going deeper. You keep digging deeper. Yeah. And there's another avenue of people they.、Mm. Certain moves, and then they, oh, this doesn't work. They find so they have a lot in the arsenal, yeah, but not so deep.、Mm-hmm. So which one do do you you know you're a black belt? People ask you which one do you kind of tell them? Um, I mean my mindset has changed definitely kind of、yeah. transitioning through the different belts. Um, when I was maybe blue purple, we would we had a group. It was just called drill to kill. Yeah, we would just drill moves over and over and over. We just、mm. drill. So we used to have Sunday open mats where we just spent two, three hours just drilling a move,、yeah. drilling a move, drilling a move.、Um, and then from that move, once we were comfortable and we could execute it, then we'd add another position. Yeah, and we try to chain them together. I think more more along the lines now that I realize I'm getting older and I'm getting a bit lazier. <laughs> I would just say work on the one move. If it doesn't work,、um, yeah. try another move. Um, but I, I've been less of the drilling, more、yeah. of the application. Okay. So、um, we, we would demonstrate a move, and I say, see if you can catch it in in a sparring situation. Yeah.、Um, I mean, there's different trains of thoughts. I mean, for, especially for white parts, I would say drill, just drill, drill, drill.、Yeah. Keep doing repetitions. Keep learning the different body mechanics your body works with. Yeah. Um, see what works for you.、Yeah. See what works for other different body types against people you're against. Um, and then, as you kind of progress through the belts, I'd say see what your game,、yeah. what your what game suits you. So for for me, my my game was always being the top,、uh, sorry, the bottom kind of positioning,、yeah. playing with spider guard.、Um, but then I was thankful enough to have the different instructors to、mm. try the different kind of、um, games within jujitsu. So so what what type of spider style are you? Are you more like a Homolo Barrow, which we call the Spider King? Are you more like Michael Langhi? So I actually. When I was back in、uh, UK、um, and I was taking a break from uh, school, uh, sorry, university. I just finished university. I was back in Brighton.、Uh, I was training under Alliance, and we had Michael Langy come down、okay. for a seminar. And、um, man, when I rolled with him, I, the flexibility and the positioning that he、yeah. puts his legs—it's just ridiculous. And he—he's—he. He's quoted as the impassable guard. Yes. And I was a blue belt at the time. I could not do anything. Any shorter than me, smaller than、yes. me, and I just couldn't do anything.、Um, so I based a lot of my game on the Michael Langy kind of、yeah. um, spider guard game, where I would have that both feet on on the biceps,、okay. one really extended, and kind of try and invert、yeah. them over the top of me.、Um, and then I kind of transitioned into kind of. Kind of like a spido lasso, yeah, spido lasso,、um, and that's worked really nicely. Kind of like a marigold these times. Yeah, yeah, yeah,、oh, okay. yeah.、Um, oh, sorry, sorry, okay, yeah. For those viewers, just a little bit of explaining. If you want to play the lasso, spider guard,、uh, three of the main names you can go search on YouTube: Pomelo、yeah. Barral, Michael Langhi, yeah, and Nicholas Marigoli. Correct. And, and then I also use kind of playing around with kind of the Keenan Cornelius lapel、okay. stuff, mixing that up, kind of lassoing the worm guard and getting、yeah. kind of. Positionings from there, and I mean, I think at that kind of my my kind of not my level, but kind of where I'm at jujitsu wise, I'm just happy just to、yeah. try new stuff. Yeah.、Um, 
And then I was... Uh, yeah, because I see, like, uh, Lang Hee's game is more defensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compared to Homolo Burrow or, you know, Marigali. Mm. They're, they're more like aggressive spider, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, correct. While Michael Lang Hee is more like a defensive. He's waiting for you. And then he has that... I call it the balloon sweep. I think Hoenn calls it, I don't know what, over the head sweep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I used to do a lot of, um, trying to work on my flexibility, when I, especially when I had the opportunity to meet him. Yeah. Uh, and it was more of a, not, I wouldn't say passive, but I, it was more of a counter kind of yeah. um, lapel kind of game. I would wait for them to move, um, find the kind of the shift in their weight and their balance, and then I'd kind of um, counter on that and then move on to a better position. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, the lapel game is definitely changing, continuously yeah. changing, and like you said, we're now kind of the trend is now the leg lock game. Um, yeah. And fortunately, again, like uh, we we had quite a high lot of caliber back in London, so I got to yeah. play a lot of leg lock stuff. Okay. Not necessarily the kind of the um, like the inside sinkanku and the outside and the yeah. kind of cross ashy. We we just used to call it the straight foot lock. Yeah, uh, I mean, here's the thing. I think people want to sound cooler than they are. Yeah, and uh, they start using these Japanese names. Yeah, yeah. I'm like heel hook, straight foot lock. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I still really don't know the name, the proper names. I just, I what did I used? I used to call it the um, the the saddle. Yeah, that's the what saddle, I used to yeah. call it, or the four eleven, or or the honey yeah. hole. Yeah. Um, but we used to, I, I, we used to play a lot of kind of leg lock game, and I'm, I, I'm. I used to enjoy the leg lock game a lot more and I still enjoy it a lot. Yeah. Um, but I get, as people are kind of picking up on it, it's a lot harder to kind of Absolutely. find the openings. I, I think, uh, you know, in jujitsu, there's always a group of people. Mm -hmm. They try to find the newest technique yeah, yeah. and they can submit everybody in the gym. Yeah, yeah. And then slowly people catch up to it. Yeah. I think, you know, with the leg lock game, with the whole Dennerheim death spot, mm. people start to want it to do leg locks. Yeah, yeah. And, but... Leg locks, actually, you know, a lot of, some people, they have different theory on leg locks. I, actually, I don't know about Shanghai BJJ. Mm -hmm. Do they allow white belts to do leg locks? Um, so, in in certain situations, we allow yeah. leg locks. Um, obviously, we, we, we don't discourage it, but we kind of make sure that people are aware of the mm -hmm. implications of doing kind of, say, uh, saddle position in mm -hmm. the gi. It's a lot tougher, right? It's, yeah. it's, to defend that. With especially with the friction of the gear, it's a lot trickier. So we don't we don't discourage, but we we allow them to, to experiment, play, but we, yeah. just to be aware of uh, the leg yeah. locks because it is quite dangerous for some white belts. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, especially if you're unfamiliar with the position, or or say uh, you're new to jujitsu and you, you learn leg locks straight away. Yeah, you, you're gonna have a lot of holes in your game, especially when you get to the kind of if you ever want to compete, you're you're yeah. gonna. You're not going to be able to do half of the stuff that you've, or most of the stuff that you've learned, especially if you do yeah. like IBJJF. Yeah. They don't, they don't allow that to, to, yeah, well, no. In gi at all, actually. I think only black belts are. Allowed black belt, you're allowed somewhere. to get into the saddle position, but if you underhook, yeah. Uh, sorry, if you overhook, it can be seen as a DQ. Ah. Uh, so you can only underscoop. Well, they, and then there's a the whole underscoop, underhook yeah. thing that Dana has says as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm still learning kind of the terminology, it's still changing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in my opinion, I don't, uh, you know, in Callum, we spar with uh, IBJJF black belt rules. Nice. Okay. So everybody can do. Uh, yeah. Anything. Anything. Yeah. Are you more, uh, Callum be more of a gi or no gi? Uh, we do have no gi classes, mm. but uh, they're primarily gi. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've noticed the trend actually in Hong Kong. Most of the classes are gi yeah. based. Not many schools allow no gi. Yeah. Or well, not, not allow, but train no gi. Uh, oh, we do? Uh, for me, I do no gi once a week. Uh -huh. um, I think Kowloon have uh, maybe six classes a okay. week. Oh, no, no gi. gi yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's yeah, really just good. Just different time schedules. Some of in course. the morning, some in the nighttime. Yeah, yeah. But around six. I mean, there's a lot of guys who likes to do no gi. Mm, mm. I mean, for um, as a beginner, mm. as a white belt coming in, yeah. uh, for some, they feel better. Because, yeah. uh, you know, the level... Correct. Even if some guy has a purple belt yeah. against a white belt, yeah, the it shortens yeah of the course. level because of they can use actually a little more power, a yeah. little more speed. Yeah. While in gi, is a little more difficult. Yeah. So yeah. So I I I get the beginners do it, but mm. um, for me my 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 opinion is I don't really like white belts doing 
like Luke Locks too mm. much because I think they fall in love with it. Yeah. And then they start losing the drive to pass. Yeah, yeah. To, you know, take my own. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. learn all the, you know, I to think, learn yeah. all the basic stuff, right? Mm -mm -mm. Which I, I feel like, in my opinion, I think blue belts and above, they can start. Yeah. I yeah. think as a white belt, I think they should, you know, yeah. focus more on, you know, position over submission. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't start leg locks till maybe late blue belt, pur early purple belt. Yeah, my my white belt position, my white belt stages was purely guard passing, yeah. uh, guard play, uh, position from side control, getting out yeah. of half guard. So a lot of the basic stuff. Yeah, a lot of the basic stuff. Yeah. Um, I I relied heavily on my guard game when I was a white belt. Thankfully, I had a, I was successful in a lot of my kind of white belt days in competitions, getting close guard, yeah, throwing up triangles, um. And that was that was my game, yeah. just triangles, triangles. Yeah, no, that's good. I was very impressed with uh, Shanghai BJJ. Yeah, like, I mean, I I never trained there, mm. but I from the competitor. Yeah, um, that very simple moves. Yeah, and they, they make it work. Yeah, and um, even at my gym, sometimes I have a white belt. You know, mm. maybe two months in, he comes in and asks me about you know the Dalahiva. I'm like. Just show me your clothes guard first. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we found a couple yeah. of kind of new new kind of students who want to learn the more technical stuff and yeah. I kind of stray them towards just just learn the yeah, I think so. the basics first. Because in competition, yeah. I know because in sparring, it's, you know, one guy is sitting down, one guy yeah. is standing. You can get into all that Dalahiva position mm. easier. Mm. But when it's in calm, yeah. a lot of times you really just see as a white belt or blue belt. Yeah. It's just clothes guard, half guard. Yeah. Someone getting a smash and half guard. Yeah. And side control. Yeah. But I asked white belts, most of them don't know how to escape from side control. Yeah. yeah. So we used to do, when I started, maybe like 10, 15, 20 minutes of just side yeah. control, escape drills. Yeah. Um, just escape, 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 escape. Yeah. Uh, loads of kind of. I think even to this date, side control is one of my worst positions on the bottom. Yeah. It's the. Uh, I can handle mount. Mount is fine. Yeah, yeah. But side control, I hate it. Yeah, it's rough. Yes, yeah, rough. <laughs> if, if you get a guy who we used to have uh, a move called uh, shoulder of justice. Okay. So if you get into side control, the guy on top will just put the shoulder into your. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, like the arm to pull back. And then, yeah, yeah. So, I, if I'm if I'm not in a good mood, I'll tap a few people just from yeah. side control, just putting the shoulder of justice. Or my other instructor used to call it the uh, the hundred kilo. Yeah, and you just you just drive that left shoulder into the yeah. chin, uh, just put as much pressure on. Yeah, those uh, those are rough. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are really rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, when when we do train here at uh, Shanghai BJJ, we we talk about kind of the 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 benefits of side control. Yeah. Um. So I've done a, I've done a few lessons kind of just on side control, where yeah. the body position needs to be in in relation to their body. Yeah your shoulder uh, where your shoulder needs to be in relation to their their face yeah um and it's a, these little things i think people miss out on just the, i think the so. basics. I, th I think there's a lot of um um like i'm a big fan of hojer mm -hmm. i like his game yeah yeah I, I like the top game too um with side control there, there's actually so many different positions within the side control for sure where you put your hand you can put your hand over you can put your hand on this side yeah. and you know, a lot of times you, you see in competition, people just, hey, shrimp, 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 shrimp. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, how? It's not as easy <laughs> as you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Simon Hayes back in London, he used to talk about being like a crocodile. So you have that one hand under the head and yeah. you have the other hand by the hip. Yeah. And as they shrimp, you follow them. You yeah. follow them like a crocodile, just keeping... Th that's a very... Actually, uh, when I went to Lucas Lage in uh, LA mm -hmm. and uh, that part he teaches it. And that oh, part okay. is, uh, you know, on the side control side, so there's not too many attacks, but you can burn them out a little bit, and yeah. then you go for an attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's quite useful. Mm. It's very, very useful. It's a good position to be in because it's, it's annoying for the guy at the bottom and for you on the top. It's yes. kind of a position where you don't necessarily have to exert too much energy. Yeah. Um, so whenever I, uh, whenever I kind of coach or kind of helping those in competitions, if I say they're in side control, I'll always say, stay there. Yeah. Hold that position. Let the guy... Oh, absolutely. Out some of his energy. Uh, I find con holding side control is easier than holding mount for me. Anyway. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, mount, 
is really tough to hold, especially if your positioning is slightly yes. incorrect, then they can shrimp out, get the leg or yeah. tap, uh, trap the leg or trap the arm. Side control is a lot less. You just got to worry about that. Yeah. Kind of I, that I got a mount to get points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then okay. sometimes I dismount. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see, go side control, knee on belly, mount, come back, bail. Yeah. I mean, because w w when you go to mount, there's really only two submission regularly. You know, mm. you get the cross choke and then you get the arm bar. Mm. I mean, yes, Americana, but that's a more like a white belt thing, yeah, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, if they're high level, there's yeah. no way you can get Americana on them. Yeah. Arm triangle and the gi, for me, is a little bit tough. Sometimes I can't finish them because mm. because of the, you know, the fabric. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been working on trying to isolate both arms and crawl up and ah. get the two arms above the head and yeah. just really squash them and then... Yeah. If they roll out, take the back, or, or again, take the armbar, the seated armbar. Yeah. Um, but jujitsu is evolving a lot. It's changing. It has. Definitely. It has. Um, and yeah, just like my just like my game, I guess it's changing yeah. a lot. Um, How about your passing game? Are you more of a mobility passer or more of a pressure passer? Definitely mobility. Okay. Um, so if if uh, if I'm kind of engaging with someone on the bottom, I usually kind of grab the knee or grab okay. the foot and kind of like a steering wheel, kind of position them okay. out, of the, out of the way and then get in that way. Um, but then if I'm stuck in side control, uh, sorry, half guard, then I'll, I'll do a lot of kind of Carlton yeah. Gracie smashing. Yeah. Um, I'll dig the, dig the shoulder into the face, yeah. kind of really squeeze them, hold yeah. them tight, kind of the isometric holds and then yeah. get in that way. Um, I didn't get to display that on Sunday, unfortunately. I thought. No, we I hope could, to see it again. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. hope to see you. You know, you know. We hope to see you perform again. That was fun, man. I mean, yeah. I, for me, it was that the weight cutting is tough. Yeah. Um, I hate weight cutting, and I think no excuses at all. Uh, Fabio was really good on that day. No, no, absolutely. I think it was a good match, mm -hmm. and um, I hope to see it again because. I was hoping to see more. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, so was I. I was hoping to <laughs> so see more. I. I was really hoping to yeah, see yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I was waiting for you to counter. Yeah, yeah I yeah. know you were falling behind, but I was like, ah, maybe he got out. Maybe I want to see something yeah, because yeah. I, I can see there is something there. Yeah. And, you know, I hope to see something more next for time. Sure. And I think just, uh, it, it to me, in the beginning, it just a little bit shocking. I think you're just a little bit shocked. Mm -hmm. And he got you right in there, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I should have... I should have understood when he, when he started kind of pulled the half guard, uh, sorry, the 50-50, I should have read it a bit better than that. Yeah. Instead, I tried to come forward again and, and kind of look on the counter and try and yeah. get in the 50-50 position better. Uh, but he was just quicker. He was better. Um, and I think definitely I need, it's something I should approach differently. I was too confident with my, my leg lock game. Yeah. Um, and he obviously has been training leg locks as well. Yeah, no, I hope to see you guys maybe do a gi too. Yeah. I want to see a spider guard as well. I think spider guard is... Uh, uh, now a lot of people not really playing Sp spider guard when, when i first started i started a little bit later than you i yeah. started tw 2012 uh -huh, uh -huh. so that time a lot of people play spider yeah, yeah yeah and as time goes now there's less and less right yeah yeah so but spider is i mean it hurts the fingers but <laughs> yeah so this is why i tape up my fingers i kind yeah. of encourage the uh the white belts as well if they're going to play spider guard or gi yeah tape up those fingers well, I need my fingers, especially yeah. in my in my in my kind of profession. I need to be able to write things legibly, yeah. so kids can read what I'm writing. Yeah, uh, yeah. For for our viewers, uh, Casey is a primary school teacher. Yeah, primary primary school yes. Teacher. Um, yeah, I love my job. Super. Yeah. Su uh, I mean, kids are amazing. I think they're they're one of the. It makes me enjoy my profession. No, uh, good. That's absolutely good. You know, I used to be a teacher a long time. Oh, okay, ago. amazing. Yeah, but you know, now I'm in business, so a yeah. little bit different. Change. A little bit of a change. Uh, a lot <laughs> but of I still teach kids in uh, Kowloon on Saturdays. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I like teaching kids too. The gym facilities at Kowloon are amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, incredible. Taki did a great job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe it is the nicest gym in Hong Kong For sure. right now. 100%. <laughs> the the, the Kowloon yeah. BJJ gym is super nice. Yeah, especially the space you have, and yes, I mean, I guess, I guess you, you, uh, convenience-wise, we're very low. We're kind of central, so it's easier. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you go a bit further out, you get more for your money, right? You get more for your yeah, what you pay for, more space. But yeah. what he's done with the gym is, is awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, I, I always say, you know, Hong Kong, the Hong Kong jiu-jitsu scene is always separated into two sections, right? Mm. There's one over on the Hong Kong island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's us on the Kowloon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's all, uh, yeah, it's always kind of a, a natural divides between different yeah. gyms and 
places of living. Um, and you know, I, I, I like this uh, slowly every gym because through competition, you kind of yeah. see what kind of style everybody is. Yeah. I mean, you guys have a very fundamental style. I mean, last time, you know, I said like Hoja Bajachara yeah. did a great. Bajachari. Sorry. I keep pronouncing his name. Wrong. Yeah, it's. I mean, I can't even. I don't even have to say it. <laughs> Roger B. I just said. Yeah. <laughs> so he did a good cross show. Yeah. And this time he has simple games. I was like, oh wow, okay, yeah. this is the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His game evolves. It has evolved a lot actually. When he first started, he was very basics. A lot yeah. of tons of cross collar chokes. Yeah. He used to hurt. He used to really struggle. Yeah. And then he moved on to the footlock game, and then he's kind of come back. Yeah. Into the kind of the basics. Yeah. Um, and it's really good to see kind of what is working for him absolutely um, and then you see like Junior for example yeah uh, he, he's exposed to a lot of these different moves yeah. um, it's, uh, he's one of my good friends and we train a lot together and kind of I show him all these different moves but he he still prefers the basics and it works for him yeah no absolutely I've, I always think basic works mm. everything is good and I think in Kowloon is more of a free open style so yeah, I, think, yeah. I think you kind of seen everybody has a different style yeah. in Kowloon there was that one guy from your your gym the um, he fought against uh, Roger Roger's first fight oh Kenny he, he's your guy right yeah, he's, he's guy. super good very good yeah he's very good primarily no gi uh, he does gi too he no gi, but he likes no gi these yeah. days so he's I, been I training see a lot of no gi when he was one of his matches I saw him go for um, he was going in for like the, the saddle position and yes. he kind of let go with his hands. And I watched him. I was like, okay, I could see what he was trying to get. Yeah. Because I th- I, who was it against? I can't remember who was it against. Um, but he, I believe it was the second match. Yeah, yeah. correct. He had the saddle position, yeah. but he kind of let go of his hands. Yes. And because he, he didn't want to, obviously, he didn't want to get the DQ. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he looked really super nice guy, actually. He int- came and introduced himself to me and yeah. talked about um, kind of the, he had heard about Roger, heard about his. His, his close guard, his, his gi game. <laughs> and I was like, you don't have to worry about it. You know, there's, no, there's no gi this time. Yeah, there's You'll no gi, fine. yeah. Just, I, think, I think gi and no gi is such a different game. Massively, yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, my gi and no gi game is very different. Uh, Absolutely. I, I can't wait to see your gi game. I do enjoy a good spider. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's rough on the fingers. Yeah. Uh, but it's part, of the, it's part of the game. It is part of the game. Yeah. But uh, I, I see spider as more like... Uh, you know, you have the arm bar of triangle. You're almost plotted just right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever you want it. You yeah. know, it's, it's more like an action-reaction guard, right? Mm-hmm. I, I consider different guard with different timing. Yeah, yeah. Like, close guard is more like you have to get your grips ready. Mm. You have that one chance to go up. Yeah, yeah. I find close guard is like you are forcing the action. Yeah. And spider is your left, right, just, you know, yeah. disturbing the balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I mean, I, I enjoy both aspects. And I think, uh, yeah, I mean, the trend seems to be no gi at the moment, but it's always it good to, a lot of the kind of students say, oh, I just want to do no gi. Yeah. I say, oh, you, you, it's good to learn gi as well. Because it is. They I come think gi complements your no gi and no gi complements your gi. Mm. I think it goes both ways. For sure. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Um, unlike what the other people say. I think people say the gi is going to be phased out. It's going to be predominantly gi. I don't think no so. Gi. I, I think, really I think it'll be think very so. difficult. Yeah. I mean, people still prefer the gi. I do. Um, I think so. Gi is cooler. Yeah. You know? I mean, if you take photos, sure. if you take a group photos, would you rather be in gi or no gi? Right? Sure, 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 right? sure. Yeah. <laughs> Especially some of the gis these yeah. days. Uh, Except for guys who like to rip open and show off I mean, the six pack. Right? I don't have the six pack. I, I don't have, so I cover it I up. keep the gi closed. <laughs> if I ever win, I just, instead of opening it up, I'll make sure it's closed and secure. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I, definitely gi is a fun, fun aspect. And there's a lot more techniques you can learn in gi as well. It is. Um, there's a lot of kind of lapel stuff application yeah. that obviously you can't get in no gi. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot of uh, new stuff is coming up with definitely in the kind of the gi situation. Yes. Especially with when I first saw the kind of the worm guard with Keen and Cornelius. Like, yes. whoa. Didn't realize, didn't think about kind of using the gi as say a lasso positioning yeah. and then tucking it under the leg. And then I remember being uh, meeting Margot. Yeah, so Margo. I met Margot back in London, actually. And then I met her again back in yeah. Hong Kong. And uh, we were talking about some of the gubba guard stuff that she had yeah. learned. I was like, wow, what's gubba guard? Yeah. And it's a combination of like the gi uh, yes. and the rubber guard. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That's really good. And then now she's like smashing it. 
yeah. in every competition. Nice. Um, and yeah, I mean, gi is definitely f- fundamental and it definitely yeah. helps with every position. Yeah. And I think it just helps with body position. If you can hold a position, if, hold a person in the gi with with grips, yeah, and I think you could no be key. in no gi. Yeah, um, But hey, Casey, uh, I had a great time today. Yeah, thank I, you so I'm, much. I wish it was longer time. I yeah, wish yeah. you'd come back soon. Yeah, yeah. And I hope to see you perform. But how about tell our viewers? I mean, uh, you got some good stuff. You got any social media you want to share with them? So maybe um, we can check you out. I mean, I'm not really a social media guy. Uh, I do have an Instagram Uh uh, c.leebjj yeah um there's some random stuff on there um mm. i've been working on this thing since purple belt called uh, the c lock okay it's like a footlock position uh kind of what uh, mikey musameshi and uh, yeah. uh what's his name dodra i've forgotten his first name uh but where it's kind yeah. of it's a different footlock position and i've been playing around with that since purple belt um and introduced some of the key stuff in that so um, did a couple of few, a few little kind of mini instructional clips for Gracie Mag, which okay. I've been fortunate enough. So you can go check that out. But yeah, I'm not really a social media guy. I'm, I'm pretty boring in that aspect. So. Hey, no worries. Or, or if your viewers, you want to go train with Casey, go check out Shanghai BJJ, yeah. maybe drop in one time, check out his stuff. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm always up for a, for a roll, a bit of fun, a bit of laughter. Yeah. Um, if there's food involved, I'm definitely involved, I'm <laughs> definitely included. Um, Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, guys. It's hey, thank you, man. Um, hopefully, we can come on here again and get Fabio on. Yes, um, absolutely. I would like to get him on to, you know. Yeah. I, actually, I want to see you guys do a rematch. Maybe yeah, for sure. One in Gi, one in no Gi, right? Are you Straight. Call, are you calling him out right now? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Fabio. I'm down. Down for another. Come up to 82 or come up to 84. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, easy. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to see, you know. I think it would be interesting if it's like a no Gi rematch and then a Gi. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah. he, he's he's up for a few kind of kind yeah. of the competition scene, and there's not much in Hong Kong. So I, yeah, I'm 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 in it for for a laugh. I'm in it yeah. for, to see where I'm at. I mean, for me, yeah. it's a hobby, and it's a nice kind of escape from kind of the real world. I guess it is. Say. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so, inspiring for a lot of people. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you for having thank me. You. Thank you, guys. See you guys. Thank you. It was, it was,